Now pay attention to the 14th verse. But the natural man receiveth not the person that just lives in the senses goes no further than the intellect. The natural man receiveth not. The things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. <laughs> well, don't tell me I can be what I want to be. Don't tell me I can have what I want to have. Don't tell me I can do what I want to do. Oh, no, I don't believe that. It's a lot of malarkey. Yeah, and that's why you don't get them. <laughs> 14th verse again, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? That he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Oh, wasn't that good last Sunday? We have an altogether different mind, an altogether different thought style. Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove which is that good, perfect and acceptable will of God. You see, here we call our philosophy the science of living. The science of living is a positive spiritual Thought style, lifestyle. I'm going to have you repeat it after me and write it on your notes. The science of living is a positive, spiritual, thought style, slash, lifestyle. So we want you to understand that. This is not just where you come in and hear a sermon. This is a thought style. This is a lifestyle. We have the mind of Christ. That mind doesn't think like the world thinks. That mind is not narrow like the world mind. This is a different thought style, lifestyle. That's why you take the services with you on these tapes and you listen to them all week. That's why you take the bulletins and you sing the hymn. I do that. I take the bulletin with me and I sing the hymn all week. We have the mind of Christ. And this is a lifestyle, thought style, because as a man thinks, so is he. Thought style determines lifestyle. Let's hear it. Say it again. The third time. And uh, here we have certain old cliches like good health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, and money. Let's hear it. See, that becomes your thought style. And that thought style becomes your lifestyle. Well, Reverend Ike, isn't that Pollyanna-ish to be repeating this all the time? Yes, it is. But the world is always repeating its negative ideas. And those of us who have the mind of Christ have to keep repeating the Christ thoughts. Now, turn over to section 11 on your lesson sheet. Dealing with the reports of the senses. And the senses is just simply another way of talking about what we read about in the text. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Why? Because the natural man goes by the physical senses. If I don't see it, I don't believe it. If I can't cognize it by my physical senses, it isn't so. But we have the mind of Christ. And we know that thoughts always become things. 
Don't argue with the senses. What did I say? Get into the Christ mind. If you want something, do what? First, get it in your mind. And stay in that mind where you're already being what you want to be, doing what you want to do, and having what you want to have. That's the first thing to do. Don't argue with the senses. Now, before the disciples received the Holy Spirit, they didn't expect Jesus to multiply the loaves and fishes. And they brought to Jesus the reports of the senses. They reported to Jesus what their model senses reported to them. And here is what the model senses are always reporting. There is not enough. <laughs> the disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, look at all of these thousands of people. They're hungry. We have not enough to feed all of these people. Then somebody said, oh yes, but there's one little boy here that's got a little lunch. That his mother made for him. But what is this among so many? This is not enough. Now know that it's always the senses, it's always moral mind that says what? There is not enough. Now please hear this, people. Look on us and hear this. Anytime you get a report that there is not enough, you know that that is not the Christ mind. You know, it's good to know who's talking to you. Whether it's your senses or the Spirit. Whether it's your senses or whether it's the Christ mind. Now, I want to be repetitious. Anytime you get the report that there is not enough, those are the senses. That's not the Christ mind. Never walk by the reports of the senses. Never say or pray the reports of the senses. Uh-oh. The natural man or the natural mind. All right, I want to take some time talking about never pray or say the reports of the senses. Because a lot of people pray the reports of the senses. Even when they go to pray, which is a spiritual activity, they pray the reports of the senses. Now, Lord, you see, I ain't got this. Now, Lord, you see how they're treating me. Now, wait, 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 wait a minute. That is not the Christ mind. Let me hear you say, that is not the Christ mind. <laughs> always pray, always say and pray the Word of God. Let's hear it. Why, Jesus went to the graveyard where man was already dead. And he wouldn't agree with death. <laughs> That's why the grave couldn't hold Jesus' body down. Because he had, there was nothing in him that agreed with death. I suggest to you that nothing can get a hold of you and hold you unless you agree with it. If it is a fact that you're broke, stop agreeing that you're broke. As long as you agree that you're broke, broke will hold you. Instead, start speaking and praying the Christ mind. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Oh, how I love that hymn. Oh, agree with God and win. Let's hear it. Oh, agree with God and win. Even if you die, never agree with death. Nah. -uh. As I told you before, I just love the words of that dear Christian lady that a lot of Christians call a heretic, Mary Baker Eddy, when she was passing on. It is reported that her last words were, God is my life. I'm not agreeing with the graveyard. I'm not agreeing with the undertaker. I'm agreeing with the overtaker. Yeah, yeah. 
I am in total agreement that God is my life. That's the Christ mind. I'm going to ask for some confessions and then it'll all be over. You're not going to do that again anymore. How many of you have ever prayed the reports of the senses? Lord, you see how bad off I am. Cross it, I said, I ain't going to do that no more. Lord, you see how they're treating me. I ain't going to do that no more. Out of the senses into the spirit. Let's hear it. Confess your riches in Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Say that and pray that. Be like the Roman centurion who said to Jesus, Speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Well, that's more than just a, 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 an individual experience. You see, when you live in the Christ mind and you speak from the Christ mind, you will speak the word only. You will pray the word only. You just stand before God and throw his word back in his face. He loves it. Let me hear you say, he loves it. I just love it when I hear people throwing the word back in my face. Xavier wanted a Jaguar when he was in school. And for a couple of years, I wouldn't budge. I said, you just have to struggle along in these Rolls Royces. <laughs> yeah, he was going, driving to Columbia every day. And he wanted a Jaguar. And so I said, well, as you know, there's everything out there in that yard spilling out of that garage from Rolls Royces to the Toyota. So he said to me, he says, well, the Rolls Royces attract too much attention. And the Toyota is not the way I was raised. What did he do? He threw out the way I raised him back in my face. I said, okay, you got it. Let me hear everybody say, throw God's word back in his face. Throw God's word back in his face. But you see, this is, not a, this, th th this is not disrespect. God loves for you to throw your word back in his face. Because when you throw the word back in his face, that's when the word becomes flesh. That's when the word becomes manifest. You see, because that's the way God operates. That's the way God works. 